Hey everyone, it's Ivan with CapeAdger.com here to bring you another gear review and today I'm talking about this right here which is the prototype 556 upper for the Sugar Weasel from Q. I have gotten a lot of questions on this largely in part because right now this is in fact kind of the one a prototype but we'll go ahead and start with how this came about. I had just competed in the 2018 tactical games First one down there in North Carolina, the end of 2018. And in it, I ended up using a Radian Model 1. Amazing rifle, hands down, thing was incredible. And I knew I was gonna be competing again, and I was trying to find something. And I knew that the Radian was probably a little heavier than what I actually needed, and probably a little longer, given the actual distances we were shooting. So I actually talked to Radian, and I was like, hey, Here's what I would like. A clear anodized Radian Model 1, about a 12 and a half inch barrel, SBA3. I want a tapered barrel and a cherry bomb on it. And they said, we can probably do that. We need to check on tolerances because we usually coat our receivers and handguards. And do you mind talking to Kevin about that? Just because we don't want to, uh, go over into his lane, considering we're using some of the stuff that they're doing over there at Q. Said, no problem, I'll talk to him about it. I ended up giving Kevin a call and I said, hey, this is this collaboration project looking at doing with Radian. Here's what I'm looking to do, clear anodizing, tapered barrel, cherry bomb, all this stuff, is that cool? And he said, yeah, no, that's totally fine. We're actually kind of in the process of prototyping something really similar. I was like, tell me more about it. And so, I ended up actually going out to Q and meeting up with everyone out there. And Nick helped me actually put together the first prototype, which was built off of a upper low receiver set from the Honey Badger, and then kind of cobbled together from there. That first Sugar Weasel also had the first prototype SBA3 in this gray color for Q, and it got cobbled together. The handguard came over from the Honey Badger SD, and the barrel was actually a leftover 5.56 barrel from when they were making Honey Badgers in 5.56. So to that end, this being a limitation, i.e. the handguard, barrel ended up getting cut down to 12.75 inches because of the limitations of this handguard. Got tapered, cherry bomb on there, and yeah, threw this thing together. I took it out, initially to zero it, Immediately after that first round, malfunction. I was like, what? I gotta get this thing zeroed. I'm flying to go compete tomorrow. But what had actually happened is my buddy in doing the barrel didn't blow it out. And so there was a little bit of grit in the chamber, basically caught the brass after that came out. It's worked flawlessly since. With a caveat, which I will get to. I then flew from New Hampshire down to Mississippi that next day and competed in the Tactical Games 2019. I ended up coming in second place in the Elite Division. This thing did rad. It was awesome. I was shooting some, I think, 55 grain Minuteman munitions and using some PMAGs. Thing did great. No issues whatsoever. If I missed anything, it was most certainly on me. And then I ended up deciding to use it at the next Tactical Games which was in Texas in 2019. At the games down there in Texas, ran into some issues. And at that point, I was still using the like true prototype Sugar Weasel, happened to be in 5.56, still on that Honey Badger upper low receiver set, but two variables changed. One, I ended up using some ammunition, I think it was 55 grain from Idaho Ordnance Factory, and two, switched over to some Tango Arc Max. In that competition, uh, it was frustrating. I was actually doing pretty good, probably would have placed, but I ended up coming in fifth at a couple stages that just destroyed me. And what happened was these crazy malfunctions where the round would get stripped or start to get stripped, hit the feed ramps, and it would push the projectile in and it would dump a bunch of powder. So clear it out, it doesn't matter, now you have an entire chamber full of unburned powder, at which point you can't really chamber anything else. Like, you need to get that cleaned out. 
otherwise it will not function. And that, that was really frustrating. I tried to figure out exactly what it was. I, I don't ordinance factory. They ended up sending some ammo off to get tested, I guess, by a third party as far as if their crimp was good, everything like that. I don't know how many rounds went. I don't know what the testing protocol was. I was just told it was within the spec of whoever tested it, not sure. The magazines, Tango Down said, hey, can we get those back? I was like, sure you can. Sent them back to them and they tested them. Mag dumps through all of them. Here's the videos on those. Yeah, Kit Badger, customer magazine number three. Mill spec mark 18, 855 uh, green tip. Okay, uh, Kit Badger, magazine, customer magazine number four. Again, uh, US spec, uh, USGI spec green tip, mark 18. They tested all those magazines. They all worked flawlessly. And I don't know, never probably really know exactly what happened. That was the only issue though I've ran into with my 5.56 Sugar Weasel. And I don't think it was weapon related. Shortly after that, they actually got in their Sugar Weasel receiver sets, upper lower sets, clear anodized. This one actually being serial number one, which is pretty cool no forward assist, and I sent mine back, the one that was built off the Honey Badger, and they rebuilt it for me off of the actual receiver sets for the Sugar Weasel. Same barrel, same handguard, all of that stuff. After that, I ended up taking this, went and competed with it again, over in, this time, South Carolina, 2019 Tactical Games. It was, it was pretty cool. There were some pretty fun stages there, and one of the coolest ones was actually making your way up to, I think, the sixth floor and then maybe the eighth floor, something along those lines. And then you had to shoot down using irons. So I ended up taking off the optic I had. At the time I had a primary arms uh, Cyclops 1X on a Scalarworks mount. Took that thing off, flipped these guys up, which are the Ultra 9 sights. And yeah, shot down at some Ipsic targets. Didn't drop a single round, which I was pretty stoked on. Targets were, I don't know, 200, 250 yards from, again, shooting down at that angle. And this thing continued to perform for me. As far as stats go on this, it is built off of their upper receiver, no forward assist, 12 inch M-lock handguard, and the barrel is stainless steel, one and seven twist, about 12.75 inches. Carbine link gas system with Q's low profile adjustable gas block. And then we have a tapered barrel with a cherry bomb, which allows you to put kind of all of the things on it, whether it is a whistle tip, bottle rocket, or any of their silencers. Since then, I've taken it out, kind of trying some different loads through it, see what kind of accuracy I can get. But here's what I ended up getting. Starting with some Norma Tactical 223, Full metal jacket. My first group came in at 1.40 MOA. My second group with the uh, Norma Tactical measured 1.61 MOA. Switching to some Wolf Gold, 55 grain 223. First group came in at 2.08 MOA. My second group with Wolf Gold came in at 2.26 MOA. I then tried some Red Army Standard 56 grain full metal jacket boat tail 223. First group coming in at 3.79 MOA. That one flyer low left. My second group with the Red Army Standard came in at 3.70. Again, that low flyer off to the left. Switching over to some match ammunition. First group came in at 1.71 MOA. And my second group, best of the day, came in at 1.20 MOA. Then using some G9 bullets loaded with Barnes 70 grain solid copper hollow points, 
first group came in at 1.47 MOA. My second group, using those Barnes bullets loaded by G9, came in at 1.61 MOA. Trying some Miniman munitions, 55 grain full metal jacket, training ammo. First group came in at 2.92 MOA. Second group with the 55 grain training ammo came in at 2.63 MOA. Trying the Miniman munitions, 68 grain boat tail hollow point using Hornady Match AMP projectiles. First group came in at 1.78 MOA. My second group with the Hornady Match projectiles from Miniman Munitions coming in at 1.40 MOA. Lastly, I tried some Black Hills, 75 grain match. First group coming in at 2.19 MOA. And the second group coming in at 1.37 MOA with the Black Hills 75 grain match. What are my thoughts on that? Honestly, perfectly happy with it. I'm pleased with it. When it comes to realistic expectations of rifles, a lot of people want that laser beam, like quarter MOA or better. It's like, okay. And granted, there's a guy out there on the internet with half MOA all day long with this Mosin Nagant. Good on him, he could probably shoot this even better than I could. And I'm sure a lot of other people could too, but went out there that day with those rounds and that's what I got. And pretty pleased with it. This continues to be just a really fun, rad little gun. It is the gun I grab when I want to go out to the range and yeah, do some shooting. I also think the 12.75-ish or 12 and a half inch barrel is Kind of a sweet spot also, if you're not going with full size 16 inch or something along those lines. Just with respect to internally, everything that's going on, dwell time and recoil impulse, it's pretty rad. So when can you get one? I'm not sure. Like I said, this one right here being a prototype, they will eventually bring them out. I'm not sure. Part of it is them scaling production and getting all of the massive orders they already have out the door before they start working on something new. And the other part of it, honestly, is probably going to be bottlenecks in supply chain. As of filming this, beginning of April 2020, while we might not have felt it yet, there's probably going to be disruptions to the supply chain. So I don't know. When it eventually comes out, if you're looking for one, pick one up because they're pretty rad. And if you enjoy my content and want to support it, greatly appreciate it. Number of different ways, liking and sharing videos, or going over to kitbadger.com, picking up stickers, KBAT target pads, all that stuff, or shirts through Teespring or Ballistic Inc. And lastly, Patreon, if you want to support me directly, but appreciate all of those things. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.